I want to welcome this week's guest. She is a dancing diva that always stays booked and busy. It is the Miss Robin Fierce. How are you? Hi. <laughs> What's up, world? What's up, podcast people? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. You like that little intro? <laughs> it was cute. It was cute. It was cute. I was working on it. No. <laughs> You How are, thought of that one all night long, dude. I you? did, I did. I was like, oh my goodness, what should I say? What should I say? I, you're always, I, we always running past each other. We could never get each other in the mm-hmm. same place. So every time I get you on the phone, I'm like, yes, how is Robin? What is she up to? And I was actually, I was recently thinking, I was like, um, where did we meet officially? We touched upon it a while back, but I was thinking, I was like, mm-hmm. where the hell did we first see each other? What? It was true. It was? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I would have seen you before that, but... Where? I don't know. I don't know. You all over the place. So I feel like I either maybe New Haven or you maybe know, if I'm... I mean, I've done things here and there in New Haven, but like Connecticut wise, before the pandemic, I was definitely um, more in Hartford and then Norwalk. Okay. Um, and then New Haven area here and there. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. I'm like, huh, I don't remember our first conversation. It was probably like, here's my song. And I'm like, how are yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I, I really, I think it was that true because I don't remember seeing you really anywhere else. And then um, we started working together for um, Drag Queen Divas every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um and then we started work. Well, actually, no. We started working for Drag Divas Brunch. First, drag Divas then Brunch. Drag first, then, yeah. Queen Divas. I get them mixed uh, up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we did a lot of the RuPaul's Drag Race viewing parties. So we used to right, always right. team up. That was a good team. I like that. Oh, that was a fun night. That was a fun night. That was always good. So today on uh, this week's episode of Afterthought Podcast, I brought Robin in so we can watch a legendary and iconic movie, The Devil Wears Prada from 2006. This is Robin's one of Robin's favorite movies, right? Yes, one of the few movies that I have actually purchased. Really? Time. Yes. Did you buy the poster too? No, I've never been uh, the poster gal. Um, I know I'm not either. Child for some people's, you know, <laughs> careers, but <laughs> okay, okay. See, I always buy posters, so I always have to ask. Yeah, yeah. I've never been a poster person. Um, the movies that I've actually bought. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, mm. Nope, I don't know how this works <laughs> on my computer. So yeah, because while you're pulling that up uh, nowadays, I mean, if you're gonna buy a DVD nowadays, it's got to be everything. It's not like back in the day where you know that's how we streamed. We would go to Walmart and go in their little pick and pick and match a little box of full of the DVDs just thrown in there, and we'd right. pick a whole bunch that we'd like, or go to Blockbuster if you were a Blockbuster girl back in the day, or Netflix when they send you the movies in the right. mail. Yeah, t- hard times. So I, these are the movies that I own. Bob the Drag Queen live um, at Caroline's because I love okay. Bob the Drag Queen. That's a comedy special. The Devil Wears Prada. Hairspray, the 2007 version. Mm-hmm. Um, Hurricane Bianca, only because I couldn't find it anywhere else. It's on Netflix. Else. Well, at the time it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see, Inception. Kung Fu Panda 3, Kung Fu Panda, The Lion King, and uh, Teen Titans, The Judas Contract. Yeah. Oh the, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what the really little the, kid the is only, going the on? Only, the only three on there that I have that are like, these are movies that I really wanted to own was The Bob the Drag Queen, Devilish Prada, and Hairspray. Lion King, this was before Disney Plus. I couldn't find it anywhere. Kung Fu Panda 3, I just wanted so to watch to it, it and I didn't feel like waiting for it to rent. And I think it was the same thing with Inception, but I did actually really like that movie too. Okay, well, I uh, now I have uh, ideas for if you want to come back and stop by the Afterthought podcast, we could do those movies. Let's do Inception again, because I haven't watched that one in a long time. What? Inception. If oh, Inception? Do- yeah, girl. Or Lion King. 
Inception's a lot, but I, I'm willing to go through it again. I might have a couple of drinks this time if I do go through it. All right. <laughs> but we are doing Devil Wears Prada. And uh, wow, I, it's so funny rewatching it. I watched it so many times back in the day, but let's go for it. What did you think about this whole movie, watching it again in 2021? Um, I feel like I probably watched it a few months ago. But <laughs> it, it's still fresh in my brain. I yeah. feel like even though I did rewatch it, I feel like I could have done this without rewatching it. Mm -hmm. Um, I've watched this movie more than probably any movie that I've watched before. Yeah, yeah. The, this movie has so many iconic um like lines, the characters yeah. in these movies. Like you forget how much has been just taken from this movie and put out into pop culture today. Like like Mean Girls, for example. Yeah. You know, it's like those lines come from somewhere, and it's all from those movies. My and, favorite quote. Ooh, not uh -huh. no, no, no. Yeah, go for it. Quote, I mean, we sweater. all love the cerulean sweater. Thank you, Even thank you. Nothing to do with you, whatever. <laughs> Um, but I don't it think does. Anybody has a choice not to like that. But my favorite quote is please move at a glacial plate. Oh, wait, I fucked it up. I fucked oh. it up. Hold <laughs> on, restart, restart. <laughs> <laughs> Scene, please move at a glacial plate. I can't say glacial. Glacial. Gl glacial. Please move at a glacial pace. You know how it thrills me. Oh, no, my favorite line is. Why is no one ready? Oh, that is so good. That's a good one too, but I can't apply that to my life because I'm usually the one that's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like uh, calling Robin Pierce to the stage where the freak is Robin. <laughs> She's like, five more minutes. <laughs> um, no, I right away, what uh, my thoughts about the movie was, for those who have listened to from the beginning of this podcast, you'll know that Tracy Toms from Death Proof is in this movie, and I always forget she's in it. She was her friend with the little fro at the dinner table with her boyfriend. and Oh, yes. The one that was really excited about the job at first, but then really not. Yes, really. Yeah. Which typical friends, right? Mm -hmm. Always when you're trying to be different or, or trying to glow up, they're going to make fun of you every two stops, which, by the way, did you notice that all the gay characters in this movie, they're not really talked about. They're just assumed. Like her, yes, her friend. I would, yes, I, would, I definitely wrote down, do we love the closeted friend? Where yeah. like, it's like, how do you know so much about this? And he's just like, oh, I'm a woman. And I'm just like, one, is that, is that, a, little, is that a little transphobic? Um, <laughs> is that a little sexist? But also we all know his ass is gay. Yeah, him and um, what's his name? Who was in the office? Oh, I'm forgetting. Nigel. Him. Nigel. Like nobody. But him, I don't. About it. I don't think it was even like a guess or have to try to figure it out. We all knew that. Yeah, and he would do his little side glances at the boys. He'd see, mm -hmm. and it was very subtle. And I was. That's what made me think that this movie is officially dated. It is yeah. not something that I watch and I go, "Oh, that feels like it happened yesterday." Because the phones, mm -hmm. the computers, the Apple computers. Yeah. You remember those? Yeah. The actors. I mean, that's the thing. You know, uh, uh, the time period we're in because all the actors seem like they've been in those recent mm -hmm. movies. Like her boyfriend. We. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him in recent stuff. Yeah. Uh, just. It's officially, we're old, Robin. Oh my God. I mean, uh, what I do appreciate about <laughs> the gay characters in this movie is that they are not over the top. And yeah. I, that's not a shady thing. I'm not femphobic or any of that stuff. Um, but like on television and movies, it's hard pressed to find just a subtle gay character. We're always the joke. on pen. Yeah. We're the we're joke, we're comic relief. Joke. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like it's, it's like black characters. And don't get me wrong, when I get together with my friends, sometimes we I are. am a lot, but that is not my everyday mode. Yeah. And it's funny because appreciated that it wasn't that. Yeah, because nowadays if you watch movies, like women are always in power positions or always the opposite of what we know them to be, which is always the the support or you know, the character who can't get nothing right. And gay characters nowadays are always the cooler character. Like I just watched um HBO's uh, Max Generations. 
I don't know if you saw that yet. It's mm-hmm. like a young high school coming of age movie. And the gay characters in the film are not what we grew up with as gay characters. They're kind of cool. Like you yeah. want to be them. You want to be their best friend. Mm-hmm. And it's refreshing to see that even in this movie, that it's not this big joke. Like here he comes, here comes mm-hmm. Nigel, the sassy guy, which I heard in the book, he was the big sassy gay character. There was a book? There was a book. This, this is all from a book. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, and Miranda was supposed to be English and- I mean, because yeah. the movie is based off of Anna Wintour. Yeah, yeah. And I heard that um, she, I guess she was against the book and she didn't want anybody to be a part of it or you'll be banned or whatever. Like there was a whole bunch of drama that was heard. I don't know if she actually said that, but I think this was something of a threat mm-hmm. to her. But yeah. I heard, I guess when the movie came out, she mm-hmm. went to see the screening. She wasn't invited to the party, but she was. She went to the screening and she wore like all the clothing and everything and she's into it. I think she was into it. I think she saw it and she kind of was like, look at me as the villain. Okay, I see what y'all did. And I will say uh, Miranda is one of my favorite villains. She's very, um, what's the one from the dummy? Cruella de Vil, but yeah. modern. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. She did it so well. She did it. So, I can't think of anybody else who could play that that character. I mean, I'm I mean, sure, I'm sure someone lot. could, but they got the right person. They and did. There is, I mean, I haven't seen like her older, older, older stuff. Really? Um, like past, um, what's the one where she dies and basically is a zombie? Meryl Streep, uh, d- uh, d- d- drop, no, uh, d- dead something. Oh my gosh, this is, oh, I was just watching this too. Meryl Streep and it's one of her most notable yeah. movies. And I don't Something know to I do with dead. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to look that up right now because that's going to bother me. Uh, dead, dead, dead. Death Becomes Her. Yes, Death Becomes Her. I don't think I've seen yeah. anything um, before Death Becomes Her. Um, and anything some good that stuff. I've seen after has been amazing. There was the one, uh, what was uh, Roseanne? Roseanne, she was in She Devil with Roseanne and mm-hmm. she plays that kind of character where she's like a author and she's bougie and she thinks okay. she's better than everybody. You gotta write that down because I don't think I've ever seen it. Write that. that down, it is iconic. She Devil, She Devil and Devil's in the name. But that movie I could watch 50 million times and never get tired of it. Mm-hmm. My favorite Meryl uh, Street movie, I mm-hmm. think, including this. <laughs> Yeah. Now, what was your favorite part of this movie? Okay, well, um, I'll tell you right now, James Holt, the designer that she sees, the the mixed looking guy that she yeah. saw at the party and he looked at her outfit and he was like, mm, uh-huh. yes, I love. He was so fine. I had to take a moment to remember how fine he was. Right. I mean, I do like the the sweater scene because the sweater scene is iconic. And I think that that's, that that scene I tell people when I think of the fashion world, they think it's dumb, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, the fashion world helps set the trend for so many things that we mm-hmm. wear, whether it's from Walmart, from H&M, all the way up. Mm-hmm. But now, after I just watched the movie, the scene with James. I, yeah. You'll notice, guys, on the last couple of episodes, I've just been boy crazy sitting in quarantine. I, I just can't help but sit there and look at these characters and be like, damn, I miss life. Like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think for me- Yeah, what about it, you? It was um, her glow up scene. Okay. Yes. Got the makeover. I love, a, I'm a drag queen, of course. I'm of course love you love a glow up scene. A makeover, and I just love the- amount that the uh first assistant and her friend was gagged and how from then Beyond. on she did her job perfectly except for the book and uh stuff like that but uh, Gis- that was giselle bad. was like uh giselle was like oh nice shoes i, yeah. I don't like it I don't look and i liked the um the little speech dialogue montage moment of um nate nathaniel is that his name? Nigel. Nigel. Nigel um, yeah. Telling her what the magazine meant to people uh, who actually cared about it. And then it opened her eyes and be like, oh, okay. I might, this might, might not be my thing, but this does mean a lot to some people. Yeah. Like what Nigel was saying, the little gay kid. <gasps> he does say gay. gay. 
Um, does he say gay? I don't, says, I don't. Ah, little gay kid, but he doesn't say himself. It's just assumed. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, a little okay. gay kid who was pretending to go to soccer practice, but really was looking through these magazines and stuff like that. So yeah. that was a very nice moment for me. That was, was that was. So I have some things that I heard. I know we already started touching upon it, but I heard. I'm gonna just run through them, see if you heard of some of these things. I think recently in Drag Race, uh, that's been airing right now, and talked about how she was a ninth choice for the lead mm-hmm. so she wasn't even in the front running um i heard meryl streep's character was almost going to be glenn close and a whole bunch of characters like jennifer yeah. aniston and angelina jolie so they were really looking i um, couldn't see it being a, casted as a younger person yeah no I, it needs to be somebody who's in, been in the game you glenn know what i mean close, maybe because she also yeah. has that look that Miranda has just in life. Yeah. Um, I also uh, heard that Meryl Streep, uh, she had her hands in this movie a lot. I mean, she she definitely, the, the, the lines where she talked about her divorce and the children, what are the children gonna think? She added that in there with no makeup and everything. She wanted that vulnerable moment. She mm-hmm. changed some of the lines when I remember when they were in the car towards the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it was supposed to be that everybody wants to be me. She said, everybody wants to be like us. Mm-hmm. She changed some of those scenes. Um, Graham Norton was actually supposed to be Nigel. He he was he was shooting to be Nigel, but I Wait. guess that didn't work. Wait, um, Graham Norton. Graham Norton. Graham Norton. He was. I'm trying to think what recently. He, uh, he's the judge on yeah. RuPaul's Drag Race UK. The Tina Burner's ex boyfriend. Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. I couldn't see that. I I couldn't see that. I could kind of see it. I mean, it wouldn't I, make I any think- sense. I think the person that plays him, which I forget his name, is the perfect person that, to play him. I like him as an actor. Also, when I worked at McDonald's, my first job when I was in high school, <laughs> this man went through the drive-thru and literally looked exactly like him. And I was hard. Pr- I was like, are you him? And he's like, oh, no, but thanks. But I really feel like it was him. And because I didn't say his name, he was like, because, you know, actors do that. Like, if you can't yeah. like, specifically say you're this person, they're going to be like, oh, no. Did you hear it in his voice? Because usually that's a giveaway. He looked just like him. <laughs> he looked He's... just like him. You never know in the McDonald's line. Robin, you were in McDonald's. I, why have you not done a McDonald's number of any Ew. sort? Never. <laughs> just throw uh, French fries at people in a little McDonald's I mean, mini Oh, wait, wait. I have done a McDonald's number, but not as a McDonald's employee. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I know you wouldn't do that because that just... <laughs> that would traumatize me. <laughs> yeah, that's for a lot of us. Trust me, trust me. All right, now we're going to move on to my favorite section. Oh, wait, the... I had a fact for you. Oh, really? What? Hit me. fact. Um, if you look very closely at uh, Miranda's eyes, they look red all the time to make her look more evil. Mm. Um, and it's very subtle, but in her waterline, they literally lined it with red in many of the scenes to give her more of that like evilly, tiredy kind of, what? Kind of look. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, like, makeup. Come on, uh, makeup. Uh, Let's uh. go. Oh my God. They did that with um, Anne's character where they, I guess throughout the movie, they darkened her eyes mm-hmm. more and more to give her that 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 dramatic effect. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I got Anne's character, but I didn't even think about Miranda. Yeah, I I what? I read that somewhere, or not read that, but heard it somewhere in like an interview or something. I don't know what it was from, but I know I heard it. And then when I rewatched the movie, I can definitely see it. You so, can see it. That's the thing. Fine. Being around a lot of my makeup friends, I'm starting to realize in movies, like when somebody's sick or whatever, you can start to see the makeup. You mm-hmm. see makeup enough, you start to see it and you're like, oh shit, I didn't even notice that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. You done got me duped, scooped. Got you what? Damn. All right. Well, moving on, guys. That was pretty good. Uh, so I only have two would you rathers. I don't know if you have one. Uh, you want me to kind of give you one, throw you one, and then. Well, depending on your, we might have the same one, but you go through. Well, lately I've been having the same one as all my guests. Uh-huh. So hopefully not. Uh, okay. Would you rather keep going in that lifestyle? you know the fashion world or yeah. quit like andy did and continue to find your dream career um that's a hard one because like she was really i feel like starting to like it but i feel like she was liking more of the success and the 
the the speed of it all yeah. which is something that i would like to mm-hmm. um oof that's hard because knowing me i know exactly what i would do i think even after that i might have kept going for a little bit but eventually i would have gotten sick of it like for me once the joy isn't there anymore i'm kind of done and probably at that point the joy was not there i mean for her the joy was really never there but she was starting to like it but then she realized like how bad miranda was Mm -hmm. and that moment where miranda was like nope this is not going to nigel this is what it is i'm gonna backstab him really like made everybody be like oh my gosh i knew she was bad but she is indeed the devil yeah that's how Uh, she keeps it yeah so i feel like i probably would have left for me i might have left a little bit after that maybe not right there because we're in paris and i still can get (laughs) free stuff right now (laughs) so when we get back I will not be there. And can we talk about the fact that this, she threw her old brick phone, her uh, her BlackBerry into the damn pond and just was like, I'm over it. I'm like, girl, that is not realistic. There are numbers on there. There is information. Phones don't die that easily. Also, she should have kept the phone so that she had the contacts. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's the thing I would do. I would leave because, I mean, nowadays, that's what I've been doing, especially in quarantine, is just pushing myself to do things that I normally wouldn't, you know, maybe I'm not making big moves like before where you could see me on Instagram or whatever. I've been making a lot of subtle moves, like, you know, moving into my own place, changing up my career into something completely different than I'm normally doing, but just staying new, staying fresh, changing my hairstyles. You see what I look like right now. Just like- She's bald. Yes, I'm bald. bald. I shade everything. Uh, the eyebrows are next. Now, um, no, just really trying to reinvent myself because not that I want to stay like this consistently, but I just want to see how far I can push myself. And I think with her character, Andy, she got to see that she's a lot more than she thought she was. And that only can help you in your career. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's why every time I see you like perform, I'm always thinking, I'm like, she is, she is growing. She's taking those steps. She's constantly learning. And I always want to say, so, by the way, uh, uh, I always want to say stuff like, not as just because you know people love to criticize a drag queen they always want to tell them how they do this do this but me as a dj i always watch you girls and y'all are so good and i always see little things that i think is cute or i'm like i notice things and i'm like i'd love to you know help you out and give you something but i always feel weird about like saying things because i never want to tell an artist oh you know what i thought it was really cool if you do this Mm -hmm. but only if you ask but i could never i just want to let you know I mean, I definitely understand that for me as a person, when it comes to me giving my advice, I will be like, can I give you advice on something? Or can I give you my unasked for opinion? And <laughs> Set it up. If yeah. you tell me no, that's fine. I will keep it. I will not be offended. If you tell mm-hmm. me yes, here you go. That's a smart way. I, I would do that. But even then, I don't know. I just mm-hmm. feel weird about that. But if you ever want me to say, or you know, whatever, I will give it in the most sweetest way and I will never offend. Okay. I mean, not like you have to give me that. Because you need to work, Robin. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no Rob, let me tell y'all, when I first saw Robin, I was like, this bitch gives me life. She's a dancer, she's a looks. Mm. You give me- say I'm a dancer. I say I'm a energy. mover. Based off of some drag I've seen, you give me <laughs> energy. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot. that's that on that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a lot of work. You're, you're cinch plucked heels up to here. Like, if mm-hmm. you can do anything, I'm like, kudos, baby. So it's right. tough out here. I know it. I see it in y'all faces. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, yeah, next question. Okay. Would you drop your boyfriend from your past life for a boyfriend that's in your new life. Not it saying that he might the be boyfriend, better. Which this will also lead me to my question for you, okay. which if the boyfriend is not, we're not on the same page anymore and we just can't get there, um, then maybe, probably. Um, but I would at least try to work because I'm very communicative, um, mm-hmm. especially when I'm in a relationship and if, we just can't fit and you're causing me more uh, stress than not, then you gotta go. 
Like that whole thing where they were like taking her phone and like throwing it around to everybody. Like, I get it. Y'all don't like her job. She barely likes her job, but is getting into it. But we don't play with work, honey. Yeah, that when she left and she said that, that would have been my last day talking mm-hmm. to all of them. Yeah. And I would have moved on. It, would, it took me a minute. Now, what is a break to you? A break and is a break. Do you believe up. in a break? I do not believe in breaks. I think a break is a break up. Mm-hmm. And if we get back together, yes. But um, when we break, that means mm-hmm. break. That's, yeah. yeah, we're gone. And a lot of people be doing that stuff. And I'm like, look, if you have to break, mm-hmm. then maybe you should think about this relationship. You should yeah. break up with him. Yeah. Break up with him. Yes, come on, uh, Reed. <laughs> yeah, um, break up with him. Yeah, I also agree. Breaks are not a thing. I be- If anything, give me space. And mm. for me, that means like we still talk here and there, but we're not seeing each other all the time. We're not in each other's space because I just need to be away from you. Yeah. So that doesn't mean I don't want to be with you. But if it comes to the point of needing a whole break, that is a break up. And if we get back together down the line, sure. But I'm not talking to you. Like we're not really communicating unless we have to like for all intents and purposes, you're dead to me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, and I think that's the funny thing. I mean, even on dating apps, I see uh, people have a hard time saying what they want right now. I get it. We changed. I mean, and and I'm even a part of this too. Like I like to leave it open because you never know, but Sometimes it'd just be nice for somebody to come up to me and tell me how they're feeling right now. Mm -hmm. You know, leave the door open, but let me know how you're feeling right now, what you want, what you want to put out in the universe right now Mm -hmm. and see how that vibes with me. Because obviously you could see what you, you know, what what you like in certain people, whether they have a good day or a bad day, makeup, no makeup, you know, what's up. I don't need no break to figure that out. I know what's going on. And maybe in the future we might change, then we'll get back together. I like that. So what's no go ahead go ahead no yeah no I was gonna say what was your question because I know you you that was a lead up that was my question do you what do you think a break is (laughs) yeah no a break is break up I'm sorry but when you say break I'm free right yeah free yeah well Robin guess what (laughs) that's it for this podcast wait could you work with Emily Oh, oh, you got another one. Okay. Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, thinking about Emily, I think yes. If I got a good job and um, and I'm here to prove myself, some little girl's not going to get in my way. I mean, I'm going to have my feelings about her, but I just got here. So I'm going to figure her out. Yeah. I, I, I could work with her. Yeah. Because yeah, that's that could, just shows, yeah. I probably could work with her, but she's not gonna like me. Yeah, she like she'll me. she won't like me. Like she, you are not going to talk <laughs> down to me when we have essentially the same job. You're not mm. my boss. I mean, she kind of was a little bit like, but she's more of a lead than like she's a lead because you don't yeah. know what you're doing, and she you have to ask her for help because right. you know you can't just figure it out on your own, not in that setting. Mm-hmm. And I know we already did Would You Rather, but uh-huh. Would You Rather, the chef or Ooh. the writer? Did the chef, okay, let's go right into it. Did the chef look like he had Botox? Because he his face was a snap. No, that was the writer, the writer. The oh, writer. no, the writer, excuse me. Yeah, the yeah. writer. Yeah, he definitely looked a little sucked and plucked and oh! Oh, 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 uh oh. It was Robin, not me. It was Robin, not me. Um, no, I think the writer, he was a little bit of a stalker. And I know guys like that where they just always casually appear in the place, same place as you. And they're always checking you out and read it into what you're doing and two steps ahead. Uh, it's a little weird to me. Um, yeah. I think the chef. The chef the, for me. The One writer is work. And you can cook. Yes. And the writer is a part of the job. I don't want to mess around with my job. So mm-hmm. if, if I meet a guy and he's cute or whatever, I'll flirt, but that's work. I mean, I'm not supposed to that as long as we're both adults about it. But, that's the thing um, though. People always say that and then they're not. Yeah. You know? but, I mean, I've always been, it's usually the other person that <laughs> <laughs> is, I'm very straightforward and what you see is what you get. 
Um, but on the note of the chef, I probably wouldn't have stayed with him in the end. Like he was a jerk throughout the whole thing. And yes, yeah. he reminded her like what she initially wanted throughout the whole thing, but he was just a jerk about it. Yeah. I would have left I, my job and left you. I would have left all of them. I would have been alone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. Um, I would have gone with you know who though that little fashion designer, little uh, Mister. Um, yes, who kind of looked like it could be your cousin or something. Okay, Especially make it make it awkward. Make it awkward, Robin. Make right. it awkward. Okay. I mean, if if, <laughs> if y'all don't know what Marsha looks like, if we were typecasting, they would be going for the same role right now. Maybe, and uh, he would have got it because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not feeling this this freshly clean shaven face right now. Not with that. It's okay. Just grow the beard, just like just like him. He had a little, oh wait, no, he was he was he was he was fully fresh. Basically. Yeah, he was fully fresh. He was fully yeah. fresh. I don't know. We'll think about it. But yeah. Robin, before we wrap up this show, actually, is there anything upcoming that's Robin? Because Robin, she's always busy, so she always got some some up her sleeve. Is there anything you want to let the audience know? Let's check the calendar. Maybe there's some um, things that we cannot talk about, but you could say something's coming. <laughs> oh no, everything to talk about. Um, oh, you can follow me on all social media at the Robin Fierce, and that's Robin with an I, not a Y, so that you can keep up to date on all the things uh, Fierce, darling. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are in the Hartford area, the next show that I'm hosting is. May 22nd, that's going to be at the Shea. And I'm starting a new brunch in Fairfield County at the Roadrunner in Bridgeport. And that's okay. going to be on Mother's Day. Um, yeah, that's going to be on Mother's Day. And you can get uh, your tickets on Roadrunner's website, which is going to look like you're ordering food, but you're not. That's just how they do the tickets. So, yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta look into this, Robin. I need something to do. And I miss yeah. seeing you perform, girl. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Well, I am One Edgewood on Instagram. Um, you could follow the show on Afterthought Pod, P-O-D, on Instagram. And if you want to email the show, if you want to be on the show, tell us about anything in the show, movie suggestions, whatever you want to tell Robin. She's amazing. You can email the show at Afterthought hub h-u-b kind of like corn hub uh at gmail.com i know somebody told me that and i was like oh great yeah well it's okay it's easy to remember right so right. uh other than that thank you so much for coming on the show yeah. uh i'd love to have you back on so we can watch some other movies i'm down for inception okay it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be inception it can be something else too okay i I mean you know maybe we'll do another uh another movie in the similar theme of this one who knows who knows i picked this one you can pick the next one okay i'm down for that all right no scary stuff though because i won't watch it (laughs) oh damn okay i'll i'll go back to it i'll figure something out but thank you so much for coming on robin okay bye i'll see you guys later have a good one bye (laughs) bye